So now let's talk about the shield blueprint, which is everything that I haven't showed you happening inside this blueprint. So let's talk about it. So inside here, we have a Niagara emitter that happens under the hero and also causes two rings to shoot out once he finally hits the ground that also coincide with the explosion. So if I go here to my summon rune summon particles, open that up and I'll show you what's going on here. So these three are all just circles. They are just circles that I got out of Photoshop. It's a texture, except the first one. The first one is actually this, which is kind of a rune shape that's used to summon the ground. So for this, I'll just show you the material that I've used for this. The rotation is actually set up within the material. So I'm using this rotator with 0.5x, uh, 0.25 in the speed and 0.5 in the y. And then I'm masking it out with this radial gradient exponential. And then for this, I'm controlling the opacity with a dynamic material and I'm changing the power of this or how opaque this is also with this dynamic material. And I'm changing the color with the particle color. So, and then I'm also changing the size. I'm going from zero to one. So it starts out small and gets bigger. Pretty simple stuff. Color, these are my color values. It's purple, as you can see. And opacity, here's my opacity. And I just slowly fade out at the end and it fades in. Pretty simple stuff. I have this set up so custom alignment, custom facing vector, and then sprite facing alignment so that this will not always face the camera. You can see as I rotate around this, this is gonna do its own thing. It's not always gonna try to face me. It's gonna work independently. That's about it. And it's lasting for 1.5 seconds. These, I'm going to kind of explain all at once, I guess. But these are just very, very simple circles. They are basically a very similar material to this, except they don't have the rotation on them. It's just a rune that we like the ones we already set up, except the only difference is custom facing vector, custom alignment, sprite facing, and they last for about three seconds. They start out at about 550. I think this one's 500 and this other one's 500 in their size. And we're just scaling them down. So they're going from 1.5 uh, scale to 0.3, or sorry, to zero after 0.3 seconds. So they're just very, very quick. They go down to, uh, they just scale, they like shrink towards the center, I should say. So I'll just show you how that works. That's that. So they have a little bit of different speed uh, and it just depends. Yep, you can just change their, how long they like. This one is a little bit quicker because it's set to 2.8 to reach its center. These are my color values. I have it getting a little bit more blue and their color is slightly different. This one starts out at 20. This one starts out at 10 and this one starts out at, hold on. This one starts out at 50. So 50, 20, 10, and they eventually go up to 50, 50, to 500. So one of them gets really, really bright and they are slowly go towards the center and their opacity slowly fades out and that is controlled through this dynamic material instance and they are all exactly the same where they just like start out and then they fade out. They start out decently strong in their opacity and they fade out, I should say. Okay, next, last thing. And then I'll stop talking about uh, Niagara emitters for a second, maybe. And so the last thing I have here is these circles that shoot out from the center. This is when the final explosion happens. And you can change when these occur with the emitter state and you check the loop delay, meaning how long do we wait before we fire these off? So our, the last explosion happens at about eight seconds. So after 7.9, these start to happen and this one happens after 8.1 seconds and again exactly the same thing sprite facing alignment custom facing vector and the initialized particles these last for about two seconds they start out at about thousand in size and then they scale their sprite size from zero to 15 so they get really really big i want them to get way out there and then for scale and color again fading out towards the end just like the other one and i'm changing their color to go from 0.520 to 50. This really isn't going to matter too much with the scale color. You can set it to whatever color you want. This is just how I did it to give it a little bit of an interesting final effect. So this is the final kaboom, if you will. All right, let's go back to the shield and let's talk about some other stuff. Let's talk about this ground. This is a vat mesh and you can't see it at first. And after four seconds, we're going to trigger its visibility so that you can see it and it's underground at first. And this is just the ground mesh, so they're the rocks that are gonna come up. 
since this is a vat, we need to set this up a bit more. But before we do that, we're setting up the animation of our base, which is the metal pieces that come out of the ground. I can show you that right now. It's this, so we're saying at this point, trigger this animation. We brought this in as an FBX into Unreal. So we're saying, hey, trigger this at this point, and then after that, I'm setting up the rest of the ground mesh, which is the rocks that this causes as it comes up from the ground. So I said, create dynamic material instance, which means like I want to control the material instance of this vat from this blueprint. And then you need to right click and promote to variable, which will give you this, which will allow you to control the material. And then I'm saying set game time at first frame, setting it to start the first frame. And then I create a timeline, which allows us to control the vats, uh, what frame it's at basically. So for example, right now it's going from zero to 60, which is the end of the rocks coming out of the ground. But let's say I wanted to slow down the rocks as they fall into place. I could go here, hit auto and auto here, auto, and then I would have it, I could have it so maybe it starts off kind of fast, but then it eases into its resting place for the rocks. I didn't need that for this, but just to give you an example of how this works and how you can edit some of your vat destruction inside of your blueprint and with timelines. And then again, I'm setting, this is just going into display frame. You need to make sure you have this naming right. I do a delay for 0.5, and then I have everybody's favorite, another Niagara particle sim. So if this is called Hero Particles, and Hero Particles is really simple. I'll try to go by through this really, really fast, but Hero Particles is simply these runes I created in Photoshop, exactly the same as how I set up the runes inside of the previous Niagara emitters I've created. And I just have sprite rotation rate. It goes from 0.5, negative 50 to zero, meaning it starts off spinning and then it stops spinning. And I have this set up so it lasts 2.3 seconds. It's 300 in size. And I'm also controlling some of the opacity here with this Niagara, with this dynamic material parameters. And then these are my color values. And this is how I'm making it like glow every bit where it's like flashing every 0.2 seconds we're getting a bit, we're going to about 10 in brightness. And that's it. And again, custom alignment, sprite facing alignment, exactly how we did the same of the other ones. I assume you'll know how these circles work. They work exactly the same as the other circles I've explained. The only difference here is that instead of shrinking down, they're getting bigger. You can see they go from zero to 0.5, they get to one. Lovely. Okay, back into the shield. So we've completed all of this. So. What we have is we have, okay, we're saying, okay, show the ground. And then we're saying, okay, play the animation of the metal base that's coming out, which is an FBX. And then we're saying, all right, now that that's coming out of the ground, start playing the ground destruction vat. And we have control of that with this. We're saying, here's the game time, here's the display frame, go through this, and then while that's going on, activate. After 0.5 seconds after activating this, play hero particles, which is right below our main character. He's gonna have those runes on the ground, those little circles. Hope that all makes sense. Let's go to the next thing which is this, after a delay of 4.5 seconds, we're setting up our cage. And this cage, I'll show you what this is. This cage is the falling animation that's going to happen. So this cage is, so this is the glass that Mai created within Houdini. And we're taking this glass into Houdini as a skeletal mesh. And once we bring it in here, we're setting up the dynamic material uh, parameters that way we can control the opacity and refraction of this glass within our blueprint and just to show you a look at that material this is what it looks like Let's zoom in a bit we have a noise on here we have these two colors set up as parameters that way you can change it later in your material instance I didn't end up using this dissolve but I am using this opacity to be able to fade out this opacity later with the dynamic material instance. So I'll be changing this refraction and this opacity later on inside my blueprint. Here are the settings that I've put in for my material instance and we'll be taking this and we'll be changing those parameters within uh, this crossfade in the next tutorial.